Hi everyone, my name's Gemma Lee and I'm the owner of Gemma Redmond Vintage. As always, on a Friday, I like to take you through the recent additions to my online shop. All of these pieces will be arriving online from next week, but if you would like to find out more about any of them, in the meantime, I can provide you with further details and images. You're also welcome to make a purchase before the pieces go live if you wish to do so too. So, um, without further ado, let's get started. I have six items to share with you today, all from varying time periods. So, um, I'll begin with what I'm wearing and I'll work my way uh, from the bracelet to the top today. So, um, let's begin. Uh, we're going right back in time with this piece to the Victorian era. This is a fabulous um, Whitby Jet um, snake, coiled snake bangle. As you can see, the Whitby Jet is uh, fac faceted to give it a, a real shine and uh, it reflects the light beautifully. And you can see that des the design of the bangle is a snake and it coils around the wrist once. Um, unusually for these Whitby Jet bangles or any snake design bracelet, this is quite a small piece so it sits really snugly around the wrist. So it's great for perhaps layering with other bracelets too um, if you wish to do so. Um, he's got a really uh, delicate and uh, lovely uh, smile on his face. I'll take take the snake off show shortly and show you. And his uh, tail is carved too. So I'll take him off so you can have a closer look. Um, he just uh, unwraps like so. And there uh, you can see his face. It's very detailed. He has little eyes and a little smiling mouth as well. Really, really sweet and uh, quite unusual to have such detail in the face on these snake pieces. There you can see the carved jet tail too. Um, so that's a Victorian piece, um, a lovely deep black Whitby Jet snake bangle or bracelet. Next, let's move on to the necklace that I'm wearing and we're moving really far forward in time from the bracelet to the 1990s for this piece. This piece was created by Monet in the 1990s and as you can see, it's a necklace consisting of um, matte gold plated and shiny gold plated leaves with um, orange uh, glass berries right the way along the length of it. It's three strands together um, so it really creates um, this uh, depth to the design. I'll just take it off so you can have a closer look. What's great about this piece as well is that um, it's extendable too so it has a really nice long extension chain to it making it suitable for lots of different people and for wearing with lots of different necklines too. It can be shorter as I've done it for with a small V or longer for with a, with a deeper V too or for perhaps wearing on top of um, a sweater. So you can see here these three strands and these lovely lovely leaves here and um, it's really really unusual and um, an unusual design for Monet quite a lot of their pieces are very bold and statementy this is um, more delicate and the matte and shiny effect on the leaves um, really creates a lot of a lot of texture and interest Next, let's move on to the earrings that I'm wearing. I'll just push my hair back so you can see. They are, as you can see, absolutely fabulous, really stylish, classic, uh, timeless in design. Um, they are by Christian Dior and they date from the 1960s. They were made by Henkel and Grosse for Christian Dior in this period. They're gold plated and they feature tassels uh, of um, 
two tassels each of a different design of chain as you can see we've got a flat chain more like a rope chain and uh, something resembling sort of a box chain here too i'll just hold my hair up so you can see them worn in this way too they're really really effective because they climb up the ear and um, they could almost be uh, a piece created uh, today um, they're so uh, big, uh, with their, their gold tone styling and uh, quite an edgy edgy design as you can see i'll take them off so you can have a closer look they are clip-ons uh, the clips work really well and securely and um uh, but they're not not too tight they're very very comfortable to wear you can see they're stamped christian dior just here and also have the uh, a henkel and grosse stamp on them too and then i'll turn them around so you can see them the other way here we go and there's the tassels moving for you too Okay, next, back in time again to the Edwardian era. This is a really uh, pretty um, locket. It's uh, constructed from rolled gold, so that means it has this sort of uh, rose gold uh, effect to it. And uh, it's a photo locket, but indeed you could also um, choose to put in uh, perhaps um, uh, charms or stones within this glass frame or um, perhaps a lock of hairs or some sort of memento within it. The way to access um, this uh, locket is to screw unscrew this top and it just springs open. You can pop what you would like to put in inside and then spring it back, uh, twist it back together again. It's it's a really great design um, and uh, a design you quite often see uh, with Edwardian era pieces. Uh, the locket itself is uh, framed with pink and colourless paste stones, so uh, it's a really pretty colourway. And I should mention that uh, there's room to put something on both sides too, so you could perhaps put something a little more secret uh, closer to your chest. I'll hold it up so you can see it worn against the skin, uh, how it would look worn as a pendant. Next, moving on to a really rare brooch. This fabulous brooch is from the 1960s and it's a piece by the renowned costume jewellery creator Kenneth J. Lane, known for his really, uh, really striking, opulent designs. This is a gold plated piece, it's a, a brushed gold plated uh, finish to it and we have uh, four really large oval milk glass cabochons around the bracelet and then a uh, around the brooch and then the rest of the brooch is set with these uh, very shimmering colourless paste stones. On the reverse here it has a great uh, fastening catch, nice and secure and then here at the base of the brooch we have the KJL stamp which corresponds to pieces made in the 1960s and early 1970s. This is a 1960s example. Um, it's very statement in size as you can see, um, it worn against uh, these sequins, it, it really pops um, and uh, but it would also perhaps work well worn at the top of a buttoned up shirt as you can see just here, hold it there. Finally, uh, let's move on to my final piece, an accessory for you. This is a wonderful example of an Art Deco mesh evening bag. It was created by a company renowned for their mesh jewellery and mesh accessories. That company is Whiting and Davis. And this example was probably created in the 1930s. 
um, a lot of these mesh um, and enameled uh, or painted evening bags often lose uh, their colourings as time goes on. Uh, it can wear due to age and use. But this example you can see has uh, lost uh, really hardly any of its original geometric design in really vibrant oranges and baby blues. The design is echoed in the enamel work on the frame and that's on both sides too. The chain handle is in really lovely condition as well. I'll just open it up so you can see inside the bag. There we go. The mesh structure, structure can be seen in all its glory and um, the little tag showing that this piece was made in the USA by Whiting and Davis is still remaining on here. Um, there are no uh, no holes in the mesh either, which sometimes is uh, happens on these pieces. So that's really great too. Um, I'll just unhook the handle. There we go. So you can see it held up again. So that's my selection of pieces to share with you this week. I hope you found them interesting. Let's recap what we have. We've got this fabulous, um, really great condition, Whiting and Davis 1930s mesh evening bag. This rare example of 1960s Kenneth J. Lane jewellery, a brooch. This Edwardian rose gold, uh, uh, sorry, um, rolled gold and paste locket, uh, perfect for a photograph. This Victorian coiled snake Whitby Jet bracelet. This fabulous Monet matte gold plated and polished gold plated leaves necklace. And these wonderful 1960s Christian Dior tassel earrings. That's my selection of pieces this week. Thanks very much again for joining me. I'll be back again next week. Next week, I'll be with you on a Thursday for a change. So please stay tuned and I look forward to seeing you then. Take care. Thanks again. Bye bye.